is my opinion. Okay. So, uh, this is the concept of our uh, talk today, how to obtain a fish. Uh, maybe your son asking you to bring him a fish. There is uh, two options to bring him a fish. The first one is to bring him a very, very big fish and giving him to him. And the other option that's just to take your son and to teach him how to get the fish himself. This is the concept of answering your junior resident. How to get an answer for his question himself from the evidence. And this is the challenge of clinical questions. The challenge of clinical questions is that we don't know everything. And the questions are straight in your mind and disappear. So you should be care how to get the answer. And there, is, or there are different forms of question. And finding an answer is a challenge because what we can see here that there is an overwhelming or overload of information and we are getting too many journals, too many problems, too many questions and actually we have a little time to read all this literature. So how to apply and what can we do? This is the way how to apply our evidence-based uh, medicine as a system in our life. The evidence-based medicine is an approach to healthcare practice in which the clinician aware of the evidence that bears on her or his clinical practice. How to add you a dish who are the evidence, which best have the evidence, he know the strength of this evidence. So it is a circle actually, and this circle I can remember with the five A's. The five A's is starting with ask and then acquire and then appraise and apply and lastly assess. And the question areas could be therapy. You are asking about therapy. It could be about prevention or etiology. You can ask about diagnostic test. What is the sensitivity of this diagnostic test? To use this test or to use this test? And what is the prognostic factor? Is it a good prognostic or a bad prognostic? So we have areas for questions. And now we will start with the first thing to teach to your resident. How to formulate a question. He's asking a very good question. How to formulate it into a searchable question to get uh, an easy answer. There is a specific knowledge for clinical decision have four essential components. The mega accounting question that, which is the simplest way, is to put it in a form with four components. The first one is the patient. As in this question, patient with upper GI bleeding, the intervention, what is the intervention you will ask about in this situation, pranexemic acid, and then if you want to know the comparison with placebo or with other drug, this is the comparison, and what is your question? Is it about the stomach of bleeding, or about the mortality, or about what? So this is the outcome. So you should put it in this format. This is what is called the PICO format. So this is a simple way to put a PICO format. And I will give the same example. So the B stands for upper GI bleeding, the R for tranexamic acid, the C for placebo, and the O for bleeding stop. And the question will be in patient with upper GI bleeding, is tranexamic acid better than placebo in a stomach bleeding? He asked now the question. How he will get the answer? Just you can go to the Google, write Biko PubMed, you will get the site of Biko PubMed. If you are getting this site of Biko PubMed, you will find the four cells or four areas, and you can write in these four cells. You can write here in a patient or a problem, upper GI bleeding. You can write here in the uh, uh, intervention tranexamic acid, and you can leave the comparative, because this option is a, against the placebo, or against the other drug, and you can leave the outcome later on, and just you, you will click the submit, you will get 44 articles 
in the midline that are discussing this area of upper GI bleeding with tranexamic acid. It's so it's difficult to get out of this 44, so you can just go to this area, the TBL, and just doing it a click like this, you just getting the conclusion of this article. You can just uh, hide this one again and going more in details for one of this article, the abstract you can read, the abstract for that. You can hide it again and if you want to even reach to the full text of this one, you can just click the full text, you are getting it the full text, you are getting the abstract and you are getting it as a free where you can get the free full text. So, if even you need to know if there are any related articles about your question, you are just clicking, you are getting more than 100 articles with this question. So, the first one, you are asking the question in a big format. The second one, you are searching the big format like this, putting, and if you add placebo and just do some bit, you are getting only 12 articles. So now it is limited to 12. It will be now concise. So this 12, you can go and search for them about the evidence. If you are asking about bleeding stop, this will be 12. If you are asking about mortality, it will go to 9 only. Uh, another area you can put, and it is very nice, the same as using the big format, put it in what's called the trade database site. The trade database site is a very nice site because it leads also to classification here for the article. Is it guidelines or it is primary original articles? So now you ask it's a question in a big format, you got an answer. Articles for this big format, you should appraise. This is the third one. The appraisal means how to critique these articles, how to know the strength and the weakness of these articles. You should know first that there is the primary studies and second studies. The second studies, and this is the top of the hierarchy of the evidence-based medicine, and on the top of that is a clinical practice guidelines. Well, hierarchy the have clinical practice guidelines, I will meet the analysis in any of the studies in the Hadar Chukdu and the 12th or 13th or 14th study will have the strength and weakness of the data so in the end of the day what is called the pre-appraised study meaning the work of the work of the work of the work of the work and that's why we are as a clinician we should search first in the clinical practice guidelines for answering our question. If we cannot find in the clinical practice guidelines, we can go to the meta-analysis and systematic review study. If we can find the answer, is it, it is okay. If we cannot find the answer, we are going down to the primary studies like the randomized control, the trial as a, the, uh, the, the top of the primary studies or the cohort of others and we can see here that the expert opinion on the bottom of this evidence-based hierarchy. <laughs> uh, this is a very nice book, which is a user guide manual for the medical literature and it will teach the clinician how to read an article and do a critical bias for it. So, I know now the evidence, I have to know the strength of the evidence. This is one of the classification of the strength of the evidence or levels of evidence. And if you question about therapy, the randomized control the trial, or the top of it, the meta-analysis of it, or the clinical practice guidelines, come in the top. If you are asking about diagnosis, you can get it from a cross-sectional study. If you are asking about prognosis, you can get it from a cohort study and then completing the strength or the level of evidence. 
You are reading a grade of recommendation in a guideline, like grade A recommendation. And it means what? It means is that they base the, this recommendation on studies of slavery, one state of evidence, and all the studies are consistent on this recommendation. So it is very hard to have it is grade A. So now we know how to pass, we know how to acquire, and we know how to get pre appraised or appraised. Then how to apply. And actually at the beginning of studying the evidence-based medicine and the clinical research, we are thinking that the literature is the only thing that we can defend how to apply this evidence. But actually we have other things like the individual clinical drugs. Professor Cameron Best from Cairo 